So we have a turtle window and then a TK inter window, which is asking for an input. It says, what should the turtle draw? Let's say a square. Then we click OK. This goes to GPT-3. GPT-3 returns a for loop for the turtle. And only if we say yes, that it actually draws it. So in the background, we're creating a turtle shape, asking the user for an input. Then we're sending that shape to OpenAI's a through OpenAI's API to text DaVinci 003 with an F string. This is the prompt, and here's where we enter the shape, and then it's going to return a turtle loop. We take that response, and then we define a function which is going to execute that response with the exec. And then we ask the user, we show this to user, the for loop to the user, and then only if the user says yes, then we execute that. We can look at a few examples. I just set the temperature to 0 0.5. Let's just say fractal this time. Here's what it returned. There we go. Let's try another. Let's write in Fibonacci this time. Here we go. This is interesting. Pretty cool. Let's do another. This time, let's say a flower. Here we go. Hopefully this will work. It's definitely trying something. <laughs> but it's going to take a moment. The cool thing about this is that we can actually put in any shape we like because it is going to GPT-3 and it's going to return a loop for any given shape, any given word, any given description. So earlier this morning, I was playing around. So I came up with this prompt. Give me a Python turtle loop for any given shape. So we just put in the shape here, right here. And then turtle for loop is returned. If we were to say a circle, and we come back here and click submit, then it returns a loop. So, so the easy way to actually extract this prompt out of the playground is actually to go here to view code. And this is just the, it says, see, following code to start integrating. So this is a good integration code. And it actually includes a prompt as well. So I just copied this, right? Or you can copy the entire thing, however you like. And I just convert it into an F string. And I'm actually entering the shape which the user inputs right here. Yeah. I employed the help of ChatGPT for this. Originally, I was asking it to write a general Python turtle script, which would just take a user input for a shape and then just draw a variety of different things. But then I thought, well, Turtle works in a very algorithmic way and it's heavily reliant on for loops. So you just wouldn't be able to like just determine what the for loop needs to be. Then I thought GPT-3 can figure this out, right? And then the idea came out like that. So we can actually recode this again. I hear I made a file called coding again. So we just need to make the appropriate imports. We need to import Turtle. And now we need to import TK enter, open AI, and import OS. We need to make a turtle object, set the turtle speed. We need to get the user input, get user input with TK enter. Here, GitHub Copilot is helping us a lot. Here we go. What should the turtle draw? We can just say what shape this. What shape should the turtle draw? It doesn't matter. Let's assign the user input to a shape variable. And then now we need to make a call to OpenAI's API to talk to GPT-3. We just need to set our environment key. I'm retrieving mine from my environment variables. And here we can actually take a look and grab the example from the playground directly. Since we already have our prompt written here, we can go to view code and actually just copy this entire thing. We don't have to copy the imports and we don't have to copy the key element, just this. And then we can just paste it here. So we are assigning the response to the response variable. Here is our prompt. We need to modify the prompt, turn it into a, F string and we need to input the shape 
that the user enters, right? This is how you work with the F strings. We have the shape from the user input. We put an F in front of the string, and with curly brackets, we've just placed it right after the shape. So this prompt will go to the GPT-3 asking for a turtle for loop. The response comes back as a JSON object. Let's just print the response real quick so you can see. We can actually test that our code is running too. Yes, the turtle window has popped up, TK enter. Let's just say square, and when we click OK, here we are, we are getting the response from GPT-3. Like I said, it's a JSON object. Its first element is choices. It's a key, so we need to access this key. And inside of it, there is a list. And then we need, inside of it is another dictionary. So we need to access its text element. To be able to do that, we need to access the responses, choices, zeroth element, and then text. And then we need to reassign this to the response because this is the response that we are actually looking for. Now let's define our function, which will execute this code. Let's say execute. And we need to use the exec function or method from Python. The reason is the return response is just a string. It's a for loop. So it is executable. We just need to uh, run the exec on it to execute the string. I hope that makes sense. Then we need to ask, show this response to the user so the user can confirm it's something they want, that they want to run. Show the response to the user, to user, with a yes, no pop-up. It is creating a TK enter pop-up window. Uh, let's see. Okay, it is using the tk.messagebug.ask yes, no, because this is going to return true. If it is clicked yes, it is going to ask, do you want to execute the above turtle loop? If we click yes to this, it will return true. If somebody clicks no, then it will return false. Then we need to check its condition. If user responds true, then execute. And that turtle window has to stay put turtle that time. We should do it. Let's just run it to make sure everything is working fine. Here we are, let's say a circle. So once we click OK, this prop goes to GPT. GPT returns a for loop. This is the for loop. Do we want to execute it? Yes, we do. And here we are, the turtle starts drawing. I think this is pretty powerful to be able to get code snippets and scripts to run within your code. So I thought this was a pretty great idea. I might elaborate more on this. I really enjoyed making this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Please, if you did enjoy it, and please subscribe if you'd like to be notified of future videos. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions or ideas for future videos. Take care. See you in the next one.